Hi, in this video we are going to see NP complete Hamiltonian cycle problem. What is Hamiltonian cycle? It's a closed loop on a graph where every vertex is visited exactly once. So we have to start from a vertex, visit all the nodes and once again come back to the starting vertex. If a graph is having a Hamiltonian cycle, then the graph is known as a Hamiltonian graph. To prove a theorem whether this Hamiltonian cycle problem is NP complete or not. So, what is NP complete? If a problem is belonging to NP pro NP type and also if it belongs to NP hard and if it can be reducible by any other related problems, then it, you can say that problem is NP complete. So, let's start with NP proving, right? So, uh, let's take this Hamiltonian cycle problem here. Uh, it will be given with a graph with vertices V and E and the output is we have we are having a list of vertices which is visiting all the nodes right and it, the last node is the last vertex is going to be the same as the first vertex right. So here we have to a verification is we have to check whether the path visits every vertex exactly once right except the first and the last. So this verification will take a uh, time which is proportional to the number of vertices. So we can say this verification algorithm will take polynomial time. Now we have to prove whether this problem can be reduced using some other problem. So here we are going to take a satisfiability problem, Boolean satisfiability problem, which is already known that it is an NP complete problem. Using that, we are going to reduce this uh, direct Hamiltonian cycle. Let, let's uh, once again recall language reducibility. A language L is polynomial time reducible to a language L2 written by L1 polynomially reducible to L2 if there exists a polynomial time computable function. So here we are taking the satisfiability problem and this is going to be solved using this DHC. So uh, the input for this satisfiability problem is all the variables and the values for these variables are given as input that the variables are mapped to the vertices for the graph and if the graph produces the Hamiltonian cycle then we can say this Boolean formula will produce the output as one that is it is satisfiable otherwise it will not uh, uh, it will not produce a Hamiltonian cycle so this is what we are going to uh, see here so let's see how to reduce this into uh, reduce uh, this sad problem into DHC so given problem is uh, phi equal to a1 and uh, r b1 r c1 that is this is this junction of literals and this is also another class which is also a disjunction of literals and these two clause are joined by conjunctive normal form right so this is known as a conjunctive normal form there are if there are having totally a k classes and variables you may have a number of variables here i am mentioning a1 b1 c1 that is nothing but logical variables it may be either in a positive literal or it may be in a negative in a form right in a complement of that right so uh, uh, the idea of to reduce this one is first we have to create a graph structure for each and every variables present in the formula and also we have to create a graph structure for the clauses and then connect them in some way so that it should encode the formula right and the time to construct this graph should be in a polynomial time so as we are just going to have a subgraph for each and every clauses as well as variables it will not take more time than the polynomial one so it is approximately proportional to the number of variables in the clauses present there the procedure for reduction of sat to dhc is given here the given input is a boolean expression f which is having r classes and n number of variables first we have to construct a graph which is an array uh, for r number of classes as well as uh, n two in columns that means if you are having n variables each variable may be in positive as well as negative literal form so totally two n columns should be created and for each and every variables we have to create a pair of uh, a pair of nodes one is ui and vi and ui at the top and vi at the bottom and we should draw a line from vi to ui for both the places a positive as well as in the negative literals and if a literal is present in the class for example here the first row represents c1 class second row represents c2 class and third row represents c3 class so let's take this as x2 literal so x2 literal is present in c2 class so we are creating a subgraph and w1 and w2 w3 
So this widget should be unique, unique for each and every meters. Similarly, here we are using W4, W5, W6 for X2 bar in class 1 and W7, W8, W9 for class 3. The overall structure is given here. Before that, let's see the complete uh, Boolean formula. Here we are having four classes. So for four classes, four rows are present. And in each of the classes, we are having variables both in positive as well as in negative literal form. And totally five uh, variables are there. So for each and every variables, uh, we are having uh, both x1 and x1 bar. So totally 10 columns are present. And in between this x and x and x bar, we are having two nodes u1, uh, u and v, one at the top and another at the bottom. And we are drawing a line from v1 to u1 as well as from v1 to u1 in bo through both x1 and x1 bar. The same for all the literals v2 to u2 in bo through both x2 and x2 bar. Similarly, for all the five variables, right? Now we have to draw a box i for each and every classes, right? So this box i is nothing but a subgraph which is having two nodes. The first node is entrance node that is AI and the exit node is, uh, node is BI, right? And from this AI, it has to visit all the literals which is present in the class. So each box represents uh, for each class, right? So if a class, let us take class C1, right? If a class C1 is having four variables, it will, it will go through A1 will move to R1. That means R11, X1 will be visited and then it will go to R12. What is R12 there? X2 bar will be visited. Next, R13. So, R13 is X4 will be visited and then X5 bar is visited and then it will come back. And it is not necessary to visit all the points as this is a disjunction of literals. If any one is true, the class itself is true. So, at every time, if any one is true, we can reach the N node B. Right. So, this is what given in this graph and uh, our every time if you are visiting from one literal to another literal, we have to, uh, it will be given as RIA to RIA plus 1. That means you are, you are visiting all the three widgets present in there. Here instead of these three widgets, it is being given as star in this graph. Right. So, uh, if you want to make a check whether this graph is having a Hamiltonian cycle, first we have to start from V1 graph. So, how to connect this with the uh, boxes, right? So, uh, after this uh, complete uh, file literals, the U5 will be connected with A1 and VR will be connected to V1, right? Now, for the Hamiltonian cycle, we are, have to start from V1, visit U1, then V2, come back V2, then U2. From U2, it has to go to V3 and from V3, U3, V4, U4, V5, U5 and then it will come to this A1. From this A1, it will visit all the subgraphs if uh, based on the letters present there and return back to B1. Now, from the B1, it will go to A2. Visit all the letters present in class C2. Then return back to B2. Likewise, it just goes on and, and then once it reaches VR, it will come back to E1. If this is possible, then you can say, if this cycle is possible, then you can say this graph is having a cycle. So, every time when the, when the path is moving from V1, V1 is moving to U1, either through X1 or X bar, based on the value assigned to it. Right. For example, if x1, uh, totally 5 variables are there, if I am assigning x, or, or 1 for all the 5 variables, then x1 will be 1, x2 will be 1, x3 will be 1, x4 will be 1 and x5 will be 1. So, v1 will move to u1 using x1 and similarly u1 to v2 there is nothing, nothing is there and then from v2 through x2 it will go to u2. In case, if I am assigning x2 is 0, then that time it will not opt x2 path, it will opt x2 bar path, that is the negative literal path, okay. So, once it comes here to a1, after completing a u5, it will come to a1. So, here it has to check what are the literals present there. So, in this example, we are having the literal x1, no. So, from this a1, it will go to 
the C1 row, right? And the same C1 row, X1 path, X1 will be taken. So, in this X1, you will be having three widgets, W1, W2, W3. It will visit and it will come back to B. Why? Because, because here we have given A from A1, it will go to X1, then it will come to B1. If it is true, it is enough. It is not necessary to check all the other all other variables. If any one of the variable is true, this class itself is true, you can reach the B node and you can go to the next uh, variable, next class variables, right? So, let's see one simple example. For better understanding, I have given a small and simple expression. Here we are having two classes. One is having two literals, x1 or x2, disjunction of two literals. And c2 is also having disjunction of two literals, x1 or negation of x2. And these two classes are joined by conjunction operator. So, this is in CNF form. Now, we are, so you can say this is a set, right? Now, we have, have to uh, create an array for uh, Two, uh, and uh, with two rows, right? C1 and C2 for class C1 and C2. And as class C1 is having X1, we are creating a subgraph W1, W2, W3. As well as class C2 is also having X1. So we are creating subgraph for X1 in class C2, right? So W4, W5, W6. Now X2 is present in class C1. So X2 in C1 row and similarly not, not of X2 is present in class C2. So here we are having W10, 11, 12 in C2 row. Next is we have to create two nodes U1 and V1. Connect V1 from V. This is the starting vertex. From this vertex we have to visit all the nodes, all the classes and then once again it has to come back to the same vertex. This is what uh, Hamiltonian circle. So we have to start from V1 draw an edge from v1 to u1 through x1 as well as through not x1 right x1 bar similarly v2 and u2 has to be now introduced and here from v2 we have to draw an edge to u2 as well as um, through negative negation of um, x2 right and also we have to connect u1 to v2 now from v u2 it should be connected to a1 right so, this A1, B1 is the box, right? So, box for class 1. And similarly, this is for class 2, C2, right? Now, uh, this A1 will go through all the literals present in the class and once again come back to B1. From this B1, it will be connected to A2 and goes through all the literals in class C2, then come to B2, then it will connect to B1. Let's assign some value for this x1 and x2 and check whether this creates a Hamiltonian circle or not. So, let's assign x1 equal to 1 and x2 equal to 1. So, let's start with v1. It will go to s1 as x1 is 1, right? So, it should not opt x1 bar. Uh, whichever is true, that should be taken. So, as I am assigning x1 equal to 1, it goes through x1, reaches u1. From u1, it will go to v2 and here x2 is assigned as 1 only so that through the positive literal it go to u2 and then from here u2 to a1 it will come right so this is for class c1 right so here in this class c1 we are having two literals so first one is x1 so a1 will connect to w1 goes through all the three widgets and then it will return back as this is true, the class itself will become true if anyone is true. So, it is not necessary to go through all the all the literals. In case, if this is false, then we can opt the second one, C2, uh, X2, right? X2 is, uh, a, from A1, it will go to W7, W8, W9, and then it will come to B1. From B1, it will come to A2 for class C2. And here we are having x1 or x2. As x1 is true, it will go to w4, w5, w6 and it will return to b2. It is not necessary to go to x2 as it returns 0. So now from b2, it will reach b1. So it can start from b1, goes through all the classes, it can return to b1. So this creates a Hamiltonian cycle. So what is that f? f is on, uh, on and 1 is also 1. So if f is satisfied, we can say Hamiltonian cycle is there. So if and only if is f is satisfied, there will be a Hamiltonian cycle in the graph. So, we can say this Hamiltonian cycle is NP complete. Thank you.